WWE No Mercy. We are here to recap everything that went down on Sunday. I am C Moody here with my man D Moody. We are Sports Moods. Two Moody's, one duty. Sports. Let's talk about it. going on people like we said we are sports moods two moodies one duty sports and we're here to recap this past sunday's raw exclusive pay-per-view wwe no mercy so i guess i'm gonna have to kick off what happened right before no mercy because it was only one match involved in this whole kickoff which was elias sampson versus apollo cruz the whole titus worldwide it was a decent match, to say the least. I really wasn't involved in it. Like, honestly, I only went to watch the kickoff part to see if I missed any other matches that were going on. To so, be honest with you, I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't watch the kickoff. Didn't watch it. I mean, you didn't miss much. Most of it was just talking, <laughs> trying to keep continu- continuing to build up everybody's promos for the actual championship matches and stuff. And it ended with Elias versus Apollo Crews, which Elias won and started to beat up on Apollo after he won to kind of tick off Titus. And he came in the ring and Elias left. So I don't know. I I feel like that's kind of, uh, I guess, like a foreseeing into maybe Titus O'Neil actually fighting Elias Sampson himself or something. But all in all, as we were saying right before we started this, um, they're, they're really not using Apollo Crews. And it's disappointing because he's a very exciting wrestler to watch. Like, all the flips and, you know, he has the right build for it. He he has decent moves. You don't really see him do too many suplexes that I can think of. More more Most of it is just him flipping around, which is exciting to see for someone his size. But, yeah. I just really feel like at this point, like we were saying before we started, uh, I don't really like the way the WWE is using him right now. I think he's definitely an intercontinental con- champion contender yeah. for the championship. Uh, I think he needs to really, you know, be used in a better way. I think maybe, I don't know if they brought him up too soon. And, you know, he's never really had any kind of excitement about him since he's been. I mean, he's exciting to watch in the ring, but... I mean, so many superstars that he's faced, he's always just been like that person that they get right. the win over. Yeah. Like, I know when he first came up, he feuded with The Miz for a little while on SmackDown Live, and The Miz always got the best of him. And then after that, he kind of just kind of just been thrown here and there. Maybe they just need to take him back down to NXT, kind of rebuild his image, and then kind of make, let him work his way back up. Because I, I think he should – be contending for the NXT Championship. Yeah, he you know, definitely he could, could go down there and do some good stuff down there, and maybe that could be the push that he needs to when he comes back up to the main roster. You know, maybe we could take him a lot more seriously. I mean, right? We take him seriously because he's a great talent in the ring. It's just the fact of the way that they're using him. It's just not really been good for him over definitely. the past year or so. Even honestly, what they can really do is just. Let them win. Honestly, I mean, that can still help because I, I like the dynamic of Titus O'Neil being his manager. I It kind of gives a old school feel of how, you know, wrestlers back in the day always had a manager. And it kind of saves over the fact that um, maybe he doesn't have good mic skills. Titus O'Neil is a very charismatic person. He can be the manager that also will come in and fight if need be. And so I think they can really use that dynamic. But like you said, they're, they're not using it. And this is going to be like another great physical performer that you know they're just under throwing do you remember the person i was thinking this while you were talking you remember bobby lashley mm-hmm. I remember him. yeah for anybody who don't know who bobby lashley is just imagine a very ripped wayne brady 
Like that's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, in a way. Yeah. Brock Lesnar size with Wayne Brady's face and color. And that was somebody that was a great talent. He looked the part and looked threatening and everything, but WWE really used him horribly. And now he's um with TNA and he's been the champion for like the longest time last time I've, I've looked at it okay. but I just hope that they don't do anything with that because they'll lose him and somebody else will definitely oh yeah definitely like Ring of Honor TNA right it's, I mean all these other you know wrestling organizations out there would love to really, and they'll take the tap because you see how Cody Rhodes when he went yeah you know that was disappointing too yeah yeah I mean you know to be you know, Dusty Rose's son. <laughs> right. And for them to kind of not really do anything with him either, for him to have to leave and go elsewhere to really find that that fame. But And can I be honest? I actually liked it, the Stardust gimmick. You did? I did. I, I thought it was okay. Um, you know, it was it was something different. I guess because it, it made sense because gold with does Stardust. Exactly. Uh, but then also, too, um, when he was just kind of more... I liked it when they were kind of like Legacy. You remember? Oh, when they were yeah, Legacy definitely and, uh, Legacy. Yeah, Randy. It's like Randy Orton's little mini faction at right. that point because all of their dads were like Ted DiBiase. Exactly. You got Dusty Rose's son, and then, and then you Bob got Randy Orton, Orton, Bob Orton. So I liked that when they had that going on too. But I mean, just, just another example of how WWE just under values the talent that they yeah. have. And another person you probably could throw out there like that is Sami Zayn. Like, oh, definitely. When is he going to get the push that he deserves? I mean, he's just always taking losses to just take anyway, losses. And right. nobody never puts him over. And he's a hard worker. He's great in the ring. He's actually pretty decent on the mic, too. Yeah. And I like the way he carries himself and his character. But it's just like they just don't yeah, they won't really use, use the great talent that they should the way they should. Yeah, it's, it's weird because it, they really have a great roster of in-ring performers, they but do. they would rather pinpoint maybe five or six on each, you know, each show and just mm-hmm. circulate through them everything that they can think of, physically drain all their creativity on these several people instead of spreading the wealth, like, mm-hmm. you know, spreading it and make it, it makes it more interesting to see people fight with different elements and different types of people. Right, because I honestly feel like even though I know we're talking about No Mercy Raw exclusive, but the way we got on uh, how they're kind of underusing Apollo Crews, I, I would, I mean, like even on SmackDown, I think Sami Zayn challenging yeah. AJ Styles for the United States Definitely. Champion, I think they would have some epic matches together. Yeah. Uh, we've seen them fight before. Uh, they have good chemistry in the ring. And, then, you know, I think, uh, you know, Apollo Crews can, you know, really go with the best of them. I would like to possibly see him and a Jason Jordan. Oh, that would match. be good. I mean, both of them are so athletic, and right. they have so much going on for their for themselves. Like when it comes to that, but it's just that we don't get to see those type matches. I mean, it's just kind of like they. I don't understand like what the WWE is doing with this no. talent at this point. It's just sitting on the roster and just wasting away at this point. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. To say the least, man, I I didn't expect to put this much time. I guess we went on, you know, kind of just built off of everything. I think the Elias Apollo Cruz match was just like you said, as an example of how we undercut great talent. Because I also like Elias Simpson too. I do like, too. He, I think he, he's got some good talent. He's got some promise. And yeah. I think I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you you're off. Good, and good. I thought on oh, this would be an interesting thing that. He actually joined Titus Worldwide, and they already got Tozawa, they got the Apollo Crews, and then they have Elias. And now to play on just the gimmick of just diversity, I mean, you have the the Asian, or I guess Chinese, Japanese, with the black guy and the white guy all together, and that's their own and faction. That, and this thing is worldwide. So. Exactly. So it's showing the diversity of worldwide. Like and also, besides those parts, Elias does music, so it's like he has his music department and so Elias can play a song before they have any kind of match where one of the factions and that was just some fantasy thing I was thinking of. Yeah, that could be that so. could be something but I just kinda more see Elias like a loner. He's yeah, like a loner. That's his that's his whole thing about thing. Him. you know, he's a one man show, you know, type thing. I I mean, you know, but you know, I, I think there's a dark side for him. Yeah. You know, I would probably like to see Possibly an Elias Bray Wyatt feud or oh, something. Maybe good. you know how 
Elias always wants the spotlight on him a lot. And maybe Bray Wyatt, just how he just pops out of nowhere sometimes. And maybe, oh, you think you're this, man. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're a star, don't you? You know, I could hear Bray, him and Bray Wyatt right. kind of going at each other. And, and Elias is good in the in the ring, too. So, Definitely. I mean, we've seen that over the past couple of weeks. He's done some really good things. And something that they did a couple of weeks ago, well, probably about a month or so ago now, when he hit Finn Balor with the guitar, I would yeah. like to see him do that more. Kind of bring like the Jeff Jarrett right. heel type thing after a match or something, take his guitar, maybe smash it over the person's head. I and, think so. You know, kind of be like that type of person. Yeah, we definitely need to bring more of an old school feel to just to keep people relevant. Because, you know, yeah. after a while, like a lot of sense is going to be in the background until. They throw him in the middle of something else again. But his yeah. only thing that's saving him is the fact that he actually knows how to play the guitar. And that's the, that's their musical relief, which is like Ada English on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. So, All right. So let's actually dive into No Mercy now. The first match on the card was Jason Jordan versus The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Which, I mean, it was pretty obvious who was going to win. Besides the fact that I just didn't feel like Jason Jordan was ready for the title. I mean, you had Bo Dallas and um, Curtis Axel on the background. So, you're never really guaranteed a one-on-one match. It's like a, so. it's like a handicap match. It's three-on-one every time you go okay. against the Miz. Always. And, I mean, of course, like I said, the Miz Taraj did interfere. And that did cost them the match. But... It was a good match. I mean, Jason Jordan always kind of has good in-ring performance, mm-hmm. and it was another good one for him. But this match didn't help Jason in yeah, any way. <laughs> the the people there was pretty stale about the whole match. Either they were partial, you know, in response, or they were just not responsive at all. So I think what really hurt this match, even if they, you know, would have followed everything the way they should have, the build for the match. There was really no build for the match. No. Because you notice at first when Jason Jordan first came to Raw and he was on Miz TV. And then we found out, okay, Kurt Angle's his dad. He interviewed the Miz. And, I mean, the Miz interviewed him. And then, you know, they feuded for a while there. And then it kind of stopped. You right. Notice they, the Miz, you know, he didn't defend his championship at SummerSlam. So he was just kind of like, set aside they put him like in a six man tag yep. him in the Miz Taraj versus the Hardys and, and Jason, Jason Jordan but then you also remember too like after SummerSlam they really didn't continue to build with Miz and Jordan because they had Jordan fight Cena one week they right. had him fight Reigns another week and they had Miz doing something totally different with Enzo Yeah. so it was just like and then at the end it was like oh we need to put, put together an intercontinental title match so mm-hmm. let's just uh, six pack challenge. Uh, <laughs> right. How let Jason Jordan win and throw him and the Miz together? There was like no build for this match Not whatsoever. And so, in order to get people invested in a match, especially the Intercontinental Championship match, that's one of your core championships, right? In the WWE, so you 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 want whoever's holding that title. Whenever they're in a match, that should be the match that people are like. Okay, that's a great undercard match, and. To me, like I said a couple weeks ago, it's just like it's a prop for the Miz now. Yeah. It's just like I know he achieved like well, he's a seven time intercontinental mm-hmm. champion and, and all this like stuff. Like the third like longest holder. Yeah, but it's like he's really not most of this year he spent defending the championship against Dean Ambrose. Yeah. And they've been back and forth, back and forth, and that rivalry finally ended and then now it's just like what do we do with the Miz? Right. And as we see, you know, Segue until tomorrow night. We'll get into the Monday Night Raw. But now, as we saw last night, it's him and Reigns now. Yeah. So it's like, what's going Ooh, on? I'm with a, Jordan thing. I'm a, without without getting into yeah. too much into Raw. I'm gonna get on what I thought it was, and they kind of confirmed it for me. Not only them, but also listening to Wrestle Talk TV. But once we get the Reigns, and then when they, you know, mm-hmm. once we get down, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that yeah, part of it's it. It's like there's, it's like the Miz has no. It's like they have no set plan. Yeah, they don't have no real one story for him. doing this, one week he's doing that. Uh, you know, it's just like... And even during the time with uh, when him and Dean Ambrose was feuding, like he had the little... After the Dean Ambrose feud, excuse me, he had a little, little mini thing with Jeff Hardy. Right. And I thought that was going to continue. But then it was like, 
no, we're going to throw Jeff Hardy back in the tag team pictures, him and Matt Hardy feuding with uh, 